Thursday, the San Antonio Spurs made a number of signings. What's up, everyone? This is Paul Garcia with Project Spurs. Let's jump right into some of these signings the San Antonio Spurs made on Thursday. So some official signings. Dominic Barlow officially uh, signed his two-way contract with San Antonio on Thursday, and that was reported on Wednesday evening that that would happen. C.D. Sissoko answered one of the questions that we're kind of wondering, which was, was Sissoko going to get a full roster deal or was he going to get a two-way contract? And the answer is, is it's clear it's now a um, a full roster deal. So according to Michael Scotto of, of Hoops Hype, um, Sissoko will be signing a three-year deal with the Spurs. I'm not sure if they're using um, the cap space to, do, to sign that deal or if they're using the new second round pick exception because it is a three, three year deal. So I do know that they had about $2 million left in cap space since they signed Sandra Mamakashvili last. Maybe they did that. Or if um, uh, they could use that, that new second round pick exception to sign Sissoko, we'll find out in about three to five days. And then Sandra Mamakashvili, Mamu is officially back. He officially re signed his deal, which was reportedly going to be for one year, most likely at the veteran minimum. And um, we'll also get the contract details for him in a few in a few days. So those three players have officially um, signed with the Spurs. And so what does that mean for their team? Let's go through some notes on their team roster. The Spurs are now officially $1 million over the salary cap with these deals official. So that was something to uh, going into free agency. That was that was one of the objectives with the Spurs was not only to, to well, the main objectives was just to, to get to the salary floor. And they did that by, by re-signing some of their own free agents, but then also trading for multiple players for, for draft assets. And so they have done that. They're now actually $1 million over the salary cap. Um, with these three players back on the roster, the Spurs now have 20 players on the roster with one open two-way spot, which means right now they can just invite one player to training camp um, in, in uh, late September or early October, whenever it begins. So, so as far as training camp goes, they can just add one more player. Their roster is pretty much set. But that means that they're going to have to make some, some um, trades or waive some players down the road here. So with Sissoko getting a full roster spot, this now means that the Spurs need to waive or trade three players before opening night of the regular season in mid-October. So that's something that the front office will have to monitor in these next few months is who's going to get waived or traded um, between now and opening night. So, so that's something to, to watch. Regarding that question of who gets waived or traded, what I wanted to do was um, just list. I just, I just, I was just interested in finding teams that had trade player exceptions large enough to to acquire some of the Spurs veteran players who are on the last year of their deals, those expiring um, contract players, and then one team specifically has enough cap space to to acquire one of these players. So let's talk about the players and some of these teams. First, let's begin with the teams that have the largest trade exceptions to acquire some of these players. The Atlanta Hawks have a $23 million trade exception, and the Brooklyn Nets have a $19.9 million trade exception. They can acquire any of these Spurs veteran players um, uh, into their trade exception. They, they can acquire uh, Doug McDermott or Devontae Graham or Reggie Bullock or Ken Birch, Jetty Osmond or Cameron Payne. So again, I'm not reporting that, these, that any of these team, teams have interest in any of these Spurs players, but... In these next few months, if uh, these are teams to kind of just watch in case the Spurs, um, you know, need to move a veteran, or they do need to move a veteran, should we say? And and you know, who are some teams that could absorb some of these players um, into into their teams using those those trade exceptions? So those are two teams that have the largest trade exceptions to take in some of these Spurs players, uh, if if the Spurs and, and those teams agree to a deal. The Washington Wizards have a pretty large trade exception at twelve point four million dollars, and with this trade exception, they can acquire either Graham, Bullock. Birch, Osman, or Payne. So multiple Spurs players can fit into that trade exception. The Miami Heat have a $9.5 million trade exception and they can acquire um, only Birch, Osman, or Payne, but I wouldn't put the Heat on the list just because they're in the situation right now where they're kind of trying to acquire Damian Lillard from Portland. So so that's obviously where their, their focus is and their priority uh, is trying to get Dame right now. The Blazers have an $8.3 million trade exception and they could acquire also Birch, Osman, and Payne. The Memphis Grizzlies have a $7.5 million trade exception, and they could also acquire um, uh, Birch, Osmond, and Payne. And then uh, the, set, the Indiana Pacers have, a, have, have a, the ability to open $7.4 million in cap space, and they can also acquire Birch, Osmond, or Payne. And then la uh, lastly, the New York Knicks have a $6.8 million trade exception, and they can only acquire either Jetty Osmond or Cameron Payne. So again, I'm not saying that any of these teams have interest in the Spurs players, but these are teams to kind of watch in these next few months. If San Antonio is trying to figure out a deal where they don't have to maybe bring back, uh, you know, kind of match up the salaries, they can just, uh, you know, uh, acquire maybe some draft assets for some of these players by sending them into those trade exceptions with those other teams. So again, those are some teams to watch in these next few months uh, before the regular seasons begins, because like we said, the Spurs have to either waive or trade three players. 
Now, one rumor that I kind of want to address and I haven't yet on the Spurs cast or in these short videos is, is this Evan Fournier rumor. It's, it's also one that I've been getting asked a lot about on Twitter. Um, so first, let's begin with Fournier's current contract. So he's going to be making $18.8 million in 23-24 this coming season. And then next year, he has a team option of $19 million in 24-25. So it's really like he's got a, a one-year deal, basically, uh, unless the team is, is interested in keeping him on for those two years. Now, the reason why this is interesting to me is because it goes back to, to June 28th was the date. So it's two days before free agency. And um, you know, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Twitter just monitoring. And Bill Simmons just tweets this random thing that really didn't have a lot to do with a lot of some of the other stuff. And he puts this. He puts... Forgot to mention this random prediction on yesterday's pod. San Antonio trades for Fournier as a Wemby big brother slash mentor and gets a protected first or some other asset for their troubles. Maybe McDermott is in a deal and then there's more in the tweet. So that kind of just caught my, caught my, my eye. We're like, it's right before free agency and Bill Simmons just throws this out there. Nobody else was even talking about this. I'm like, huh? Okay. Then I kind of just noted it in the back of my mind. Like, okay, that's just always something. So like on my, on my Nova paper, I've had Fournier's name on there. Just kind of just keeping an eye uh, with the Spurs, especially when they had all that cap space open. Well, then about a month later, almost July 20th comes and Ian Begley of um, SNY, uh, he has, he has, it looks like a mailbag that he wrote. Uh, and I do want to give Hoops Hype some credit for, um, that's where I, which is where I found this, this article. Uh, and anyway, what, what happened, the gist of it is that um, a fan asked Begley, you know, who are some teams that might have interest in Fournier? And he has this very interesting line regarding the Spurs. He says, one other team that I am keeping an eye on is San Antonio. The Spurs are among those teams who have had interest in acquiring Fournier via trade. Unless they have changed course recently, the Knicks have been against attaching any additional draft compensation in a Fournier trade. And then Begley goes on to note how the Spurs had the cap space to acquire Fournier's $18.8 million deal already. And now, seven days later that this was written, the Spurs' cap space is completely gone. Like I said, they're $1 million over the salary. So... If the Spurs did have interest in, in acquiring Fournier, they could um, put a package together pretty quickly uh, using some of these um, players um, on expiring deals. Uh, you could put a player like Doug McDermott and maybe like Ken Birch together or, or Osmond, Payne and Birch or, you know, Graham and Bullock, something like that. Those kind of deals, uh, two two players for one or, or three players for one kind of deals do work to, to acquire um, Evan Fournier if, again, the Spurs had interest and if the Knicks had interest and, and they came to an agreement on a deal. Now, not just talking about Fournier, I do want to make one note is that these, these recent players that the Spurs acquired via trade, like Cameron Payne, Jetty Osmond, uh, Reggie Bullock, these players can have their salaries aggregated to basically put like a three for one kind of trade together uh, immediately because these players were acquired with cap space. So since that happened, there's no restriction on how fast you can put those players into a trade, combine their salaries or with other players on the Spurs roster. Um, because the Spurs acquired them with cap space, they can make that move quickly. So again, that's just something to watch um, in these next uh, few months before training camp begins and before the regular season begins is, you know, who are those three players that the Spurs uh, end up um, uh, either having to trade or wave? So that's something, something to watch. So for Project Spurs, I am Paul Garcia.